Being someone who is primarily a portable ham radio operator, I'm always looking for a coaxial cable that's going to be both lightweight and efficient. So generally, when I'm hiking through the woods, I'm going to choose to bring a run of RG174 or a run of RG316 because they're lightweight. But they're not the most efficient cables in the world, so we use pretty short runs and don't go too high in frequency. Well, a few months ago, I was talking with Stefano Messi, and he sent me this. This is their Airborne 5, an extremely lightweight yet efficient coaxial cable. This 30-foot run weighs 0.2 kilograms, which is less than half a pound, which is about the same weight as this 35-foot run of RG174 and this 25-foot run of RG316, while being three times as efficient as the 174 and about twice as efficient as the 316. Don't believe me? Well, numbers don't lie. Let's hook this up to my rig expert analyzer and take a look. Now before we get to the numbers, I want to talk about the physical characteristics of this cable. First and foremost, it is a 5 millimeter cable, so a little bit thinner than an RG8X. The jacket is a UV resistant polyethylene that is great for outdoor use while also being direct burial. Underneath this jacket, we have not one, but two shields. We have an 84% screening that's made with 96 aluminum magnesium wires that makes it both lightweight and incredibly durable. And then we have 100% screening from an aluminum foil that is covering, and I have to read this, a high pressure physical injection foamed polyethylene triple layer dielectric. Say that three times fast. The center conductor of this is a 1.13 millimeter solid 99.9% .9 pure copper wire, and it has a velocity factor of 85%. Now I've had this cable for many months and I've really put it through the paces. This cable has seen over 30 POTA activations in the woods with my Yaesu FTX-1F. And the reason I waited so long was, honestly, I was worried that the solid center conductor might break with repeated winds and unwinds and bends and twists and turns and all that. And I can tell you, I have not had a single issue with this, even being a solid center conductor. Now all these specs sound great, but it gets even better because you can save 10% off on Messi and Poloni cable, either at Gigaparts with code MP10 or directly from Messi.it in Italy using code K8MRD. Any orders directly from Messi and Poloni over 99 euro in US and Canada also get free shipping. Now, let's hop on the bench and take a look at the numbers. Now to conduct our experiment, I'm gonna try and be as scientific as possible, but there are some variables. First and foremost, as awesome as this rig expert analyzer is, it is not lab grade quality. So keep that in mind, we are amateurs. Next, we have three different lengths of coaxial cable. The RG174 is 35 feet, the RG316 is 25 feet, and the Airborne 5 is 30 feet. But this should hopefully give us a general idea of the attenuation that we're gonna see between these three. I also have a PL259 to BNC female adapter on the Rig Expert, as well as a BNC female to SMA that I have the short from my Nano VNA on. I have cleaned all of the contacts with isopropyl alcohol in a Q-tip to eliminate any contaminants on the connectors. And I also wanna mention for these kinds of tests, it does not make one lick of difference that these cables are coiled up, I promise you. So with that said, let's begin the test. So first let's test our RG174 which has a velocity factor of 66. You can see we have a 35 foot run of coax here. So we'll go test the cable loss. We'll go ahead and run it open. Then we'll go ahead and add our short, thusly. Run that. And let's go down to 7150. And we can see at 7150, we have 1.13 dB of attenuation. At 14.3 megahertz, we have 1.31 dB. At 28.6 megahertz, we have 1.6 dB of attenuation. And at 50.6 megahertz, we have 2.11 dB of attenuation. Now let's run our RG316, which is a velocity factor of 69%. We'll go ahead and run that. You can see we have a 25 foot run. And we'll test for cable loss. We'll run it as an open circuit first. Then we will connect our short, 
run it again. And at 7.15 megahertz, we have 0.55 dB of attenuation. 14.3, we're 0.76 dB. At 28.6, we're 1.08. And at 50.6, we're 1.51 dB of attenuation. Now let's take a look at the Airborne 5, which has a velocity factor of 85%. We can see we have a 30 foot run here. We'll go to our cable loss. We'll run it as open. Then we can connect our short. Run that again. And at 7150, 0.35 dB attenuation. At 14.3, only 0.45 dB of attenuation. 28.6, we're at 0.6 dB. And at 50.6 megahertz, only 0.83 dB of attenuation. So there we have it, the proof is in the pudding. Here's the numbers at the bottom of the screen if you wanna pause the video to scrutinize them. But it does it, the Airborne 5 is a more efficient cable while maintaining an incredible light weight. I was at the Huntsville Ham Fest giving a presentation at Gigaparts and I passed this cable around. People couldn't believe how lightweight it is. I wish I could put this in your hands so you could see for yourself. It's just incredible. Now from a user standpoint, again, I've used this cable over 30 times uh, doing POTA activations. Number one, the jacket is really strong, so I'm not worried about people trampling on it, uh, but it's also really flexible given that it's a solid core coax. I can't emphasize that enough. Over under method for winding, you can just throw it out and it unwinds, it doesn't kink. Uh, it's just a very, very nice, lightweight, easy cable to use. I love it and it is very, very efficient. So that's all we got for today. My name is Mike, KMRD. Thanks so much for watching Ham Radio 2. We'll see you next time, 73.